One of my favorite interviews that we did was, um, by the way, we were the first people to interview Tony Bourdain. Now, before he wrote his first book, Kitchen Confidential, he had done a piece, I think it was for The New Yorker. What was yeah, the title? We didn't, we didn't interview him. We had him read, the, we did it as a commentary. It was the piece that he wrote about um, like not... What life is like inside a, a what restaurant. What life is like inside the restaurant and how he never ordered fish on a Friday. It was that one little... A Monday. Store, on a, a Monday, Monday. yeah. yeah. Um, and he did it as a commentary. That's right. Yes, he did. So at any rate, by the time this happened, Tony was moving along, and um, we were doing uh, working with Gourmet Magazine. Gourmet Magazine used to have these uh, annual events where people would come in from all over the country, and they could take classes, but they also were taken behind the scenes. And we were sort of the stage show to kick it all off. So now I'm on stage with Tony Bourdain and Thomas Keller. Now, Thomas Keller had a little outfit and still does called the French Laundry. In New York, he had opened a, a, a per se. He had other restaurants. And, and, you know, people, chefs, referred to him as the most talented cook in the United States. And Tony Bourdain was still cooking at this time, too. So he was still running this little French, not this yeah, big French exactly. pastry called Leal. Yeah. And I had asked both of them, each of them, um, well, how did you get started in cooking? You know, what brought you into this world? And uh, if we could have the tape. I was a rotten kid. Uh, I didn't have any respect for anyone else. I had no respect for myself. This is Tony, myself. in case you haven't uh, figured that out. Yeah. My roommates got sick of me loafing on vacation, and uh, they got me, you know, they got me a summer job washing dishes. Mm -hmm. And I looked around, and I said, I, for various reasons, I like this business. I like this lifestyle. I like this. I want to be a member of this tribe. It was the first time that I went home with something to feel proud about. It was the first bunch of people I met uh, whose respect uh, was important to me. I went home feeling like a champion. I was a very happy dishwasher. And just the, the, the cooks got, you know, more free liquor and better girls. <laughs> <laughs> now it comes down to it. Now it comes down to it. <laughs> now, Thomas, you didn't set out to go to restaurant school or, I mean, how did you come to food? My mother. I mean, how do we all come to food? Um, uh, my mother ran restaurants when I was a child. and. It was something that, as being the youngest of five boys, she was back in her career, and I would go to the restaurant after school because that's where my mother was. And she would set me in front of the dishwasher, and I thought it was such a fascinating thing. You put something in that was dirty, and 30 sec seconds later, it came out <laughs> clean. I mean, this is really, this, is, this, was, this was an amazing thing to a young boy. Um, so growing up in, in, in that back of the house role was something that I always did. Um, but of course, there was job security there. My mother yeah, wouldn't fire yeah, me. Yeah. I want to get a picture of how both of you work. So here's the setup. It's Friday night. You're in the middle of the worst part of the rush. I walk into your kitchen. Thomas, what would be my first impression? Well, hopefully you're, you're impressed with what you see. Um, hopefully that, you know, we have, we're professionals in what we do. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, you're gonna walk into our kitchen, wherever it is, whether it's, whether it's French Laundry, Bouchon, or Per Se, and, and, and be impressed in an inspiring way. Uh, and what I mean by that is looking at a group of people that are collectively working together for a common goal, not just in the kitchen, but in the entire restaurant. Uh -huh. um, is it noisy? I mean, is it? It shouldn't be noisy, no, no. No, we try to keep, we try to keep the chaos. I mean, you know, it's a con you know, you've heard it before, it's controlled chaos. Yeah. And, and that's what it's about. I mean, chefs are control freaks, are they not, Tony? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's the root of, root of who we are. Um, and, but you don't want to have a situation where it's chaos in the kitchen. No. Leal, Friday well, night. Slightly more civilized at Thomas. Uh, <laughs> okay, Friday night, well, I'm, I'm cursing affectionately. <laughs> affectionately. Uh -huh. I'm probably on my second margarita. Um, they're playing Mexican hardcore uh, over by the grill station. Uh -huh. uh, the bus boys are squeezing behind me. The, the, I mean, it, it looks chaotic, but the food is coming up. It's going out on time. It's going to the right customers. It's properly cooked, and we're not getting any plates. There are no returns coming back from the floor. So it is about control, but it's two very different control systems. Mm -hmm. I tend to foster a us versus them mentality in the kitchen <laughs> that I find very useful in, in you know, Team spirit, you know, it's the dust, it's the dust boat principle of, of restaurant management. But the that's result's a, the same. I think that's the important thing. So there's many ways to get to the to, to a successful result. We have, we have slightly lower standards. <laughs> <laughs> what a career he has gone on to have, right? He's taken food and turned it into. Uh, he's just gone down paths that you would never imagine.
and exactly what you should be doing with food yep. today. I mean, it's not that it's not wonderful to watch somebody cooking in a kitchen, mm -hmm. but you look at what Tony's done in taking us into people's lives, into the politics, into the life of a place, and it's not always about the fanciest restaurant or you know the famous chef. I love what he does. Mm -hmm.